today. I'm so excited to be here with you today and to be able to share some healthful, delicious, and nutritious recipes that can fit into everybody's schedule and everybody's lifestyle. You know, pasta is my favorite food, um, right up there with bread, and it's on the forbidden list for a lot of people, unfortunately, but it doesn't need to be. So today we're going to explore all of the ways in which people can eat pasta and yet enjoy optimal health at the same time. We're going to talk about the different varieties of pasta. We're going to talk about different ways to prepare pasta. We're going to talk about gluten-free and pasta made from alternative flours. And then we're going to talk about all the different health benefits that pasta can bring and the way to make pasta very healthful and to enjoy it in your life, hopefully daily, like I do. And there are many ways to do that. So, you know, today's event is a little bit different. It's not just me doing a straight recipe for my books like I always do. We thought we'd change it up a little bit. And so we're going to be making a delicious bow tie pasta recipe. It's a pasta salad with a creamy avocado vinaigrette that was actually developed by one of the nutrition and integrative health students at the Maryland University of Integrative Health. And research shows nowadays that um, chronic diseases and illnesses, most of them can be prevented and sometimes even reversed with optimal and individualized nutrition. Nutrition is a field that's growing at a rate of 11% from 2020, 2020 to 2030. They're expecting an 11% growth in the field of nutrition, which is about 11% higher um, you know, than, than expected. And it's also higher than other careers, other different industries and industry fields. So that 11% growth rate is higher than what people are seeing across other careers. So it's great to be involved in culinary health. We're gonna talk about the culinary health and healing certificate that they have at MUIH, as well as the other disciplines within nutrition. So people can, um, if, you know, if you're interested in that, you can check it out as well. And then how today is gonna to go is I'm gonna make this bow tie pasta salad with creamy avocado vinaigrette that was one of the students' recipes. And then I'm going to show you how to make the homemade bow tie, or as we call them in Italian, farfalle pasta, because farfalle are absolutely delicious. And you can use a box variety when you're in a hurry, but if you have time and you want to, you know, explore some different varieties and make them from scratch, you can do that too. In the recipe, we're actually going to use these bow ties, which are made from brown rice. So because they're made from brown rice, it's gluten-free. A lot of people are saying that they can't have pasta because of celiac disease or gluten intolerance. Um, but these brown rice, you know, could be an option for some people. So I'm going to make the student's version of the pasta salad with this. We're going to talk about all of the culinary health nutrients that are in the different vegetables and the ingredients that we're using. And then we're going to make the same recipe Italian style making the pasta from scratch with a, a whole grain, which I'll tell you about too. So right now, I'm just gonna add some salt to my boiling water, and I'm gonna get the pasta right in there, and we'll give it a stir. So here's a tip. Whenever you're making pasta at home, you always wanna make sure that you've got abundant water, that it's got a little bit of salt in it so that it will boil, and then once it's up to a full boil, that's when you add your pasta in. It doesn't matter if you're using red lentil pasta or you're using brown rice. You know, there are so many different types of wonderful uh, grain and pulse-based pastas. They can all be used, but the same thing. The trick is always the same. You want abundant boiling water, and then you put them in, and you can turn your heat down a little bit. Make sure that you give it a stir, and that way the pasta is not going to stick together. And that's just a trick when you're making boxed pasta or already made dried pasta. So I've got this wonderful little basket here. Of course, these are our brown rice bow ties that we're doing because they're gluten-free. These are regular bow ties that you would get at the store or farfalle, of course, as we call them in Italian. But you can see here in my hand the difference between the size. The brown rice ones are a little bit smaller and the regular ones are a little bit uh, bigger. And so they're gonna have a slightly different consistency and whenever you're adopting pasta recipes using different types of flour, it's always important to think about the kind of sauce that you're going to have because you want to make sure that you're using sauces or condiments for the pasta dressings, 
which are really going to stand up to different types of flour. And another good example of that are these whole wheat penne. So you can see these are just regular penne. Penne means pens in Italian because they look like quills, right? And that's what they used to write with. So these are called penne. And penne is the most popular pasta shape in the United States and also in Italy. A lot of Italians say, you know, this is the American pasta shape, but it's, it's the most commonly eaten one in Italy as well. You can make them from uh, scratch or you can make them, you know, you can use the box variety. This is a whole wheat version. Um, and then I have these wonderful Tuscan uh, peachy nests that they're called. And I've got some spaghetti. This is a traditional spaghetti made with durum wheat flour. Um, it's slowly dried and it's made with gold dyes. Uh, some of these are made with bronze dyes, like this one, and some are made with gold. And then, of course, on the market, you have ones that are made with um, in more of an industrial kind of a stainless steel dye. So there are six different ways which you can ensure when you're making homemade pasta um, that it's you know going to be healthy and nutritious and good for you. And I'll talk about that when we make the, the farfalle from scratch with flour. But when you're making boxed pasta or something that you buy already purchased and dried, there are also six ways that you can look for that to know um, if you're getting a good quality and if you're getting the most nutrients out of the pasta. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to look for is the flour type, okay? So again, using our little uh, model, you know, this one is, is used regular wheat. This one is using brown rice. This one is using a durum wheat. This one is also using a durum wheat. That's the number one thing, because if you can source, if you can tell the source of the flour, where it's coming from, what type of flour they're used, and they mention this, it's traceable, that means that you're going to get a lot more nutrients. Obviously, whole grain, you know, whole wheat has uh, 80%, 100% of the different type of grain in it. So you make sure that you're getting the whole grain. That's very good for you. But there are also many kinds of artisan flowers that are being used now, especially in Italy. And those artisan flowers are very similar to what was used in the ancient times. So there's a very simple DNA. Those are very digestible. One of them is called Senatore Capelli, for example. I demonstrated that on Good Morning Washington last week. And that type of flower, when it's used, we can rest assured, you know, it's nothing has been done to it. It's a very normal uh, grain, just like we were eating thousands of years ago. So if you can tolerate wheat, those types of wheat are much better for you. So that's the one thing we're going to look out for. The number one is the flour types. The second thing we're going to look out for is how it's made or the drying process. So when, even if you're using an industrial pasta like this, uh, they have to dry it. And sometimes with a lot of the, the mass market pastas, they dry it very quickly. They put it in these, in these large areas with this very strong heat. And that robs and kind of dehydrates the pasta and robs it of its nutrients. Other ones will say right on the package, slow dry. When it's slow dried, you can be sure that it, it retains some of the nutrients. So that's another thing. Um, the third thing that you can look out for in packaged pasta is the types of dyes that it's extruded from. So when we talk about this type of dyes, we don't mean um, dye like you color something. It's not about color. It's about the type of material that's used to make on the little plates when the pasta goes through the machine and it's cut. Sometimes there are stainless steel dyes and it's just made through those and it comes out and, and it gets cut. That's one type. That's the most commonly used industrial one. But sometimes it's made with a bronze dye or with a gold dye. And when it's made with one of those, the pasta retains much more of its integrity in terms of shape. So we look for the dyes. The fourth thing we look for is the cooking time. As you can see, I'm boiling my pasta. And it normally calls for about nine minutes when you uh, make this particular type of, of box pasta, sometimes 11, sometimes 12, depending on what you're using. If you can cook it a little bit less and make it severely al dente, so that there's really a nice bite to it when you chew, you know, enough that it's pleasurable, it has to be cooked enough so that you enjoy eating it, but you also wanna have a, a little bit of a bite. That's gonna make sure that you get some more nutrients in there. Then it's all about the dressing and the portion size. So however you dress your pasta, you know, are you going to use a fresh tomato sauce? Are you going to use a fr fresh vegetable vinaigrette or something with vegetables, something with pulses and legumes? That will keep it very healthy. Or are you going to use something, you know, that's prepared already with a lot of preservatives 
that robs the pasta of its, of its nutrients and adds a lot of things that we don't want to it. And then the sixth thing that we look for um, in pasta nutrition that we have control over when we're making prepared pasta is the um, portion size. So you want to make sure about a cup of cooked pasta, that is what we're going to be needing um, for a regular portion size um, of our pasta. So not more than a cup. And uh, a cup goes really quickly. So you want to make sure that we get the most flavor in there. So in order to do that, I'm going to start now by making a vinaigrette. So this is the student's recipe, and we're doing this creamy avocado vinaigrette. So I'm going to add some salt into my blender, and then I'm going to um, add the avocado. And I just got this guy right here. So I'm going to start by slicing him right down the middle. And then we'll come through, we get the pit side and the other side. I'm gonna grab a spoon. And since they're nice and soft, I'm just gonna put it right in. You know, avocados are so great for us because they're high in potassium, which can help to regulate our blood pressure and the functioning of our nervous system. They also contain vitamin B6, which is really good to uh, prevent inflammation. And there have even been a lot of studies linking um, avocado to a positive mood. So it's definitely a great thing to add in, you know, to our diet if we want to be, um, enjoy all of those wonderful health benefits. And it tastes great. And avocado gives you a nice creamy feeling, you know, instead of cream, which might not be so great for you. And it has all of these wonderful nutrients as well. I'm going to add apple cider vinegar. So many of you have heard about all of the wonderful aspects of the apple cider vinegar. And then I'm going to add lemon juice and zest. So I'm just rolling the lemon on the counter to help get some of the juice out of it. And we're going to put the juice right in there. I love these little juice squeezers because they help you get all the juice and not the seeds. And I use so much lemon juice, you know, it's antiseptic, it's antimicrobial, it's got vitamin C and a lot of great nutrients in there for us. Plus it tastes great. It gives us all of that bright Mediterranean flavor. Then I'm gonna add in a garlic clove and I already added some salt, so now I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper. And we need about a quarter cup of olive oil. So I could talk for the full hour on the health benefits of extra virgin olive oil. But basically what it does in whenever you pair it with the vegetables or any other healthful ingredients, it really helps to coax out more nutrients. Um, it has anti-inflammatory properties and it's full of polyphenols, which are wonderful antioxidants for us and can help prevent tumors, and all kinds of mental health issues and impair, um, impairments as well. It also helps to improve concentration. It's got a lot of the wonderful omega-3 nutrients in there for us. And because we're focusing on health and we're focusing on cancer prevention, um, extra virgin olive oil is a great thing. So I'm gonna give this a shake. I'm gonna put it right in my blender and stop talking. see this is coming through and it's really making this nice creamy almost paste like kind of a dressing for our pasta and so it's going to be the wonderful binder to kind of connect the pasta and the other ingredients so I'm going to check the doneness of my pasta it's actually looking great So now that that's done, we can just toss in this delicious cream right into the pasta and it's gonna 
look great and taste great. This is a really fun recipe to make with kids. You know, to the student who created it, kudos to you because it's sometimes difficult to be able to get kids and people who aren't used to eating a lot of vegetables to eat vegetables. This is the perfect combination of a comfort food and also something that's really, really good for us. So I'm gonna stir that all in together. And this brown rice pasta actually has a softer texture than um, what you might be used to using. So it combines really well. And you could also have it warm. You know, we're, we're making a pasta salad today, but you could definitely have it warm if you wanted to. I'm going to turn it into the bowl now because I just want it to stop cooking a little bit. This is only eight ounces of the pasta. It's not even a full box, but you can see how much it makes. And once you add the nutrients in um, from all of these other vegetables, it really makes it even, even a better idea. So I'm gonna add in now this red onion, which I've just sliced. And red onions are also rich, rich in antioxidants and vitamin C. They help to rid our cells of the waste material. So if you're you know, detoxing, if you're trying to get healthy, if you want to sleep better, red onion is a really great addition into the diet. It also adds a wonderful smell and a perfume to this. Now I'm going to add in my chopped tomatoes. So as I mentioned, MUIH is focusing on Cancer Prevention Month. And the traditional tomatoes, whether they're fresh or in tomato sauce, are packed with lycopene. This is a compound that's been known to help with the prevention of many forms of cancer. So it's really good in terms of taste. Everybody loves it. It looks nice. And it's going to help in terms of cancer prevention as well in our health. And then I'm going to add spinach. So I've got this fresh spinach, which is loaded with vitamin C, helps to support the immune system. It creates um, uh, folate, which can increase red blood cells and helps support growth of our nervous system. So it's a wonderful thing to add. And of course, the spinach, you know, when it's raw, it takes up a lot of space, but then, as we stir it into the pasta, it can kind of start to cook down a little bit and look pretty. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use the rest of, I'm gonna serve it up a little bit differently. I could, I could toss it all in, but I think I'll do something different. And I'll just put the spinach down on the plate Since it's a pasta salad, I think it's fun to serve it this way. And then I'm gonna put some of my pasta right on top. We'll make like a little bed out of the spinach. That way you can get a little bit of crunch, especially since we're eating it cold, a little bit of crunch, a little bit of flavor at the same time, and put some tomatoes right in the middle just to give it a little bit more color. You can see you could easily get four portions out of just these eight ounces of pasta and these few ingredients. And we cooked it, you know, in such a short time um, that I think it's great to be able to to make it so quickly. So here's this dish. This is our bow tie, gluten-free bow tie pasta salad made with brown rice noodles and our creamy avocado vinaigrette. I'm gonna set this aside. Anybody has any questions on this, on the pasta salad, on how you could make it? Oh, I forgot one of the ingredients. Last but definitely not least are our red bell peppers. I've got a little bit of red and yellow here. These are going to give us some more nutrients, some more antioxidants, really help with our immunity. 
and they look so beautiful. So I probably organize them like that. And just for fun, we'll give it another drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. And there you have it. Does anyone have any questions so far on the pasta salad, what we've made, um, you know, the students, anything like that? Um, as I mentioned, this was from a, a student in the nutrition program, um, but it's important to know that there's also for some of the chefs watching or anybody who has another career, but also really interested in culinary health and healing, there is a post-baccalaureate certificate at MUIH, which means that in two trimesters or in just eight months, you can get the certificate fully online, which helps to teach about, you know, all of the, the wonderful um, intersections between nutrition and the culinary arts. It has a very global approach, so it's um, multicultural and still culturally specific programs, which is one of the things I like the most about it, you know, because when I read about the program, um, a lot of times different modalities when they're talking about healthful cuisines, they usually focus on one culture or another. So to be ha have everybody representative within the syllabus was really interesting to me. So I think that you all will like that too. And thank you, Maria, for the, for the beautiful comment. Sometimes I miss the comments as I go through because um, I'm just excited to be making pasta <laughs> and I forget everything. So it's nice to know that they're there and I appreciate uh, MUIH for putting up all these great links because you can go there and get all the resources. You can download the recipe and make it yourself, send it to somebody. Maybe you'll have a, another different spin on it um, than mine. So one of the things that I would love to do now is to take that same recipe, but to make it kind of Italian style. So this is like Italian culinary health. We're going to do the homemade pasta. So uh, we're going to make our own farfalle right now if you would like to join join along or you can save this for later when you're home we'll make these guys from scratch and then we'll make a sauce with the same ingredients that the the, the muih nutrition student suggested for the dressing but we're going to do it a little bit more of an italian style um, just for fun so let's go ahead and get started with that the first thing i'm going to do is teach you how to make homemade pasta so we're making farfalle today but you can use this recipe to make ravioli um, pappardelle, tagliatelle, really any, any um, egg-based pasta dough that you like. So don't worry about that. The first thing that we're going to need is flour. And the second thing that we're going to need are eggs and a fork. So this is the flour that I'm using. And what I'm going to use today is actually called einkorn flour. So einkorn corn flour, it's spelled E-I-N-K-O-R-N. This is a 12,000 year history. Um, its DNA is very simple, so our bodies can digest it more easily. It is a wheat product, so if you can't have wheat, you don't want to have it. But if you are going to have wheat, this is what our ancestors were eating. It's the, it's, the, it's the best wheat we can buy, pretty much. And so I'm going to use that, and it's got about 80% of the whole grain. So it doesn't look brown, it doesn't look like a whole wheat, but don't let that fool you. Um, it is. It's just um, the way that it has been milled that makes it look a little bit different. So I'm using about a cup and three quarters of flour, of this einkorn flour. You can use all purpose if you want. You can use double zero. It all works. If you wanted to use um, a brown rice flour, if you wanted to use any other flour made with a legume, you could. You could use, you could add some cooked spinach into this. I'm going to show you how I just created the mound right down on my counter here. Sorry for the adjustment. So I've got this little mound, right? And now I'm going to add in my eggs. And one of the things when you make pasta or bread that you want to keep in mind is the time of year really makes a difference. Um, the, the temperature outside makes a difference. On more humid days, you're going to need more flour. On more, um, more dry days, you will need more liquid, which in this case is egg. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to add a little bit of salt. And there are all kinds of recipes for fresh pasta online. And people make all kinds of variation. But this is just a traditional Italian um, egg-based pasta dough, which the only thing I do, and I do this for all my pastas now, 
um, is I use the einkorn flour instead of the double zero flour just because I want to make sure that I'm getting this wonderful ancient grain in here. And now you can see I'm just stirring together the egg going right into the outside of the flour. And I have this big ring on today, not because I normally uh, wear rings in the professional kitchen, but this ring was a gift to me by my Zia Santina, my, my Aunt Santina, who made the best pasta of anybody that I know. And so I'm wearing it in her honor because, you know, for me and for a lot of Italians and people who are celebrating World Pasta Day today, pasta isn't just about uh, something that you eat to not be hungry anymore. It really is a ritual, a very important, cherished ritual because when we had homemade pasta, it was a big treat. And, you know, before industrial pasta, like in my great grandmother's time, that's all they had was fresh pasta and they, they had to make it daily. And you can see how magical it is to just transform a few ingredients into this wonderful dish. So this is a bench scraper, a bench press or a dough scraper. You want to have one of those on hand if you're going to be making pasta and dough regularly because it really helps to clean up the counter. It helps you as an aid in the kitchen. And it's, it's one of my main essentials right after a chef knife is to be able to have this. And this pasta is nice and light. So I'm just um, combining it all in together and making sure that it comes. You just want to be careful that it doesn't kind of fall over. But this is the way that pasta has been made for millennia. Believe it or not, pasta started um, in the fifth century before the Common Era in Calabria and in Basilicata regions, which was part of Magna Grecia in Southern Italy. Um, we had a pasta called Lagane, which is a very wide, kind of wider than Pappardelle pasta. They were originally made with barley flour. And this was in the time when Southern Italy was, was in control, was under Greek rule, and it just spread. So every region has different pasta. And of course, here in the United States, pasta is enjoyed by everybody. Italian food is now the number one food in the world. And, um, also the number one in the United States. So it's nice to be able to make these recipes from scratch at home. It's fun to do it with a friend, with a coworker, with, with a family member. And it's also fun to do it by yourself because you'll see, um, you know, just making this simple dough, like how fun and how um, entertaining it can be. But then also when you eat it, the consistency is just so different that when time permits, it gives you a nice variation. And time doesn't always permit, um, even for me, even for the professional chefs. So we want to have box pasta. Box pasta can be a part of everybody's life, um, you know, even if you're gluten-free or on a certain diet. And fresh pasta can too. So, you know, it's just a matter of scheduling some time aside and saying, oh, today I would like to do something fun and, you know, de-stress or really just indulge myself in, in something nutritious and delicious. And, you know, um, this einkorn flour is, um, as I mentioned, it's a whole grain and it has 30% of the recommended daily intake of manganese and zinc. It's also very rich in lutein and lutein helps to suppress inflammation. Um, it defends our cells against free radicals and oxidative stress. It enhances the sharpness of our vision it can improve um, visual contrast sensitivity, reducing glare impairment, and protect our eye tissues from sunlight damage. So who knew, right? You make fresh pasta and you get this wonderful um, addition of being able to have better eyesight and improve your health as well. It also has protein and um, amino acids in it. So it's a great thing to to do if you want to enjoy this way. So you can see this is how this ball is looking. It's a little bit dry. It's not quite as moist as I would like that to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack another egg, but I'm not going to use the whole egg. I'm just going to use a little bit um, of the liquid in order to make this dough a little bit more wet. And if you wanted to, you could use um, water as well. Sometimes 
you know, with the with the translations of units in in Italy, we use grams and eggs, which you know may be a slightly different size than the ones that we use in the states. And so sometimes there's a variance in the recipe, and you just have to play around with it to get the right, the exact right consistency. But that's enough, and that's all I needed to make the dough. So now it's coming together really nicely. And I'm just going to knead it a little bit longer. If any of you would like more pasta recipes, pasta dough, pasta sauces, things like that, that are healthful and nutritious and authentic, you can go onto my website. It's ingrio.com, and we have more. And there are a lot of culinary health and nutrition recipes also on the MUIH website. So this is what you're gonna end up with. This is your pasta dough. And you're just gonna wrap it in plastic and set it aside. And then I'm gonna wash my hands. And now we can go ahead and start making our farfalle. So thank you for showing those links. These are our bow tie pasta. That's what we're going to go for now. I have a swap out dough, which I made earlier this morning. That's this. And so I'm going to show you how to roll that out. When you make the dough like we just made, you have to wrap it in plastic wrap and you have to let it, let it rest for 20 minutes. That's all it takes is 20 minutes. So not long at all, but it just takes a little bit of planning ahead. Um, you could make it ahead of time if you want. You put it in the refrigerator and then bring it out to room temperature when you're ready to roll it out. But as I was saying earlier, you know, there's a pasta that can be fit into everybody's lifestyle. So um, it's all a matter of you know, budgeting out your time and when you have time to do different things. I'm going to teach you a secret also. When you make fresh pasta, you don't have to eat it at all at the same time. You can very easily just um, put the fresh pasta, like what I did with this in order to save it for today, I made it yesterday, was I put it on a baking sheet that I lined with a little bit of flour, and then um, I just set them on top, and I made sure that they didn't touch, and I put them in the freezer for 30 minutes. After you put them in the freezer for 30 minutes, um, they're going to kind of solidify a little bit and they get a little bit more hard. And then you can put them into a plastic bag, into a Ziploc, into some kind of container, put them in your refrigerator, and then boil them up whenever you're ready. So that's what we're gonna do today with these. So you don't, um, you can do this process in steps, you know, if you want to be sure. I don't recommend making fresh pasta on the day that you're going to have um, company for that you're nervous around for the first time. You know, I recommend uh, playing around with it a little bit on your own and making sure that you are really comfortable with the recipe before inviting anybody else into the mix. I think that's probably going to be the secret to success when it comes to making fresh pasta. You want to get to a really comfortable place with it. You know, even I've had um, mishaps of, of making things on television, maybe because things get moved around and you get caught off guard, or with friends. Sometimes I make pasta on what is called a kitara which is a guitar-shaped guitar um, instrument where you roll the dough on top and it cuts the strands for you. And it actually has chords like a guitar. And one time I was doing a live demo and I was pushing and pushing and none of the, none of the pasta was coming through. And we realized at the end that I needed to have the, the, the um, chords tightened, just like you do a professional guitar. And that slipped my mind. So that was one mishap. So that, that can happen. But once you get used to the process, you'll see it's so easy and you can do a million different ways. I'm not using a machine today on purpose because I want you all to learn how to be able to uh, roll out the pasta on your own and cut it by hand, um, like the way that you know our my ancestors did, and you know roll the dough the way that I learned from my grandmother. I think it's much it gives it much more character, and it's a really nice fun process. I do have a machine, and if you have a machine and you want to use it to speed up the process, that's great too. But I'm I'm assuming a lot of people who are watching don't have machine so I'm just gonna go um, you know straight away and the shelf life um, for for fresh pasta once it's dry if it has eggs in it you know you want you want to be able to use it in a couple days 
um, if it's if it's regular dry pasta without eggs, it will last much much longer um, in a cool temperature for for even months. Okay, so let me show you. what we're working with here. So this is my work area. And this is my dough that has some spinach attached to it. And I'm gonna give a little bit of flour here. And you need a large, clear kind of a workspace for this. You also need a small rolling pin. So if you don't have a small rolling pin, you can buy one. You could cut off the top of a, of a broomstick you can do what you ever need to do, but make sure you've got a lot of flour on this. This flour ratio is kind of delicate because you don't want to have too much and you don't want to have too little. If you have too much, it's going to make your dough really tough. If you have too little, it's not going to do anything. So you want to have just the right amount. So I'm going to cut the dough into quarters like this, and I'm going to set it aside while it's floured. And... I'm just going to flatten this out. I don't know if you can see, um, kind of flattening it out, adding some flour, flouring my rolling pin. And then we're just going to put our hands on either side of the rolling pin and just roll back and forth. It's super easy. And this is, you know, considered an artisan type of action in Italy. And Svolgina are the name of the women who make the Svolgie or these, these sheets of dough. And that's a lot of times a term that's used for a female pasta maker, because in the in the ancient times they were always female. So you can see I'm going back and forth this way. If you're ever wanting to make sure that something is rectangle, this is a trip that a trick that I learned from my grandmother. You're going to take your rolling pin and push it out to each corner, this way, this way, this way, and this way, and that will help to get you a little bit more of a rectangle shape when you roll out. Of course, if you use a pasta machine, it always comes out in perfect rectangles, so you don't have to worry about that. But I'm not using a pasta machine today. I'm just gonna roll it out by hand because it's good exercise, it's fun, it's traditional, and it makes really delicious pasta. And of course, we're making our farfalle or our bow, bow ties today, but you can also make a lot of different other shapes this way. Just going back and forth. Now you can see here, this little guy is starting to stick. So whenever I find something starting to stick, I just move the flour around, add a little bit more flour because I don't want it to stick, and then I turn it around. And that's one main thing is we don't want our pasta to stick. Now I'm gonna, I keep pulling the sheet forward because it keeps getting longer. And another trick from my grandmother is always to, to knead out from the middle. So you can go up or down, but go from the middle. And that helps to give you the widest most even pasta, because we don't want pasta to be thick on one side and thin on the other. So you just go from the middle. So now we have this gorgeous sheet of fresh pasta. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to turn it into a complete rectangle. So I'm gonna cut the top off, I'm gonna cut the bottom off, and then just go right down the sides here. If I was making regular pasta, like a tagliatelle or uh, lagane, mal tagliati, something like this. So these little pieces over here, I'm going to save. I'm not going to throw those away. I'm going to put them on a baking sheet, put them in the freezer for 30 minutes. When I get done, I'll have a lot of scraps. I'll let them dry. And then I'll use these to make pasta with beans. This, this irregular type of pasta are called mal tagliati in Italian, which means poorly cut. But they're traditionally used when you have... Um, when you're making pasta with beans. So this is my hand rolled pasta sheet, okay? And you can do a lot of different things with this, but the first thing I wanna teach you is how to make the farfalle. So I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna turn it in half like this. And once I turn it in half, this will give me a little crease so I know where to cut. And I'm just gonna cut straight down the middle like this. And then we'll do this. And so this is our pasta sheet. Then we're going to come down, if it's your first time, or if you're nervous, you're not good with numbers, of course, you can use a ruler. And I'm just going to do like, let's see here, 
uh, probably two by two inch squares. So I'll come down, I'll just make a little dent where each of them are. And then I'll do the same on the other one. If they're a little bit irregular, don't worry. Sometimes I do four by four or three by four, and that's really fun, you know, because um, if you're ever like an elegant event and you make the super huge farfalle, it looks literally like the bow ties that men wear on their collar. And so I, I think it has an elegant thing. I like to do that like on New Year's. Okay, so it doesn't cut through. I forgot to use my little food and roller. Normally we do him. So we'll take it like this and just pinch down through the middle with your thumb and your index finger like this, and it gives you a little farfalle. So we'll try with another one. You have your square and you just take it and pinch right through the middle and press down with this index finger. And there you have another farfalle. And we'll keep doing it a bunch. You can also use this fluted edge if you want them to have fluted edges. This way and down. So these are like the traditional size shaped farfalle, right? Um, one more again here. Bring your fingers through the middle. It's gonna make this little indentation and you just keep pushing until you get the bow tie. And then if you have to flatten out the sides like that, and that's it. So it's super simple. And that's all you need to do. Now you could, you could leave these like this and make what are called the quadrati, boil them up, put them in, quadrati just means square in Italian, put them in your favorite sauce. They're also really good. Or you could make ravioli. So you could put a little bit of your filling right here, and then you could put another one on top, and then you could crimp this with a fork or with edges to fill it, and that would be your homemade ravioli if you don't have a stamp. So there's so much that you can do with these pasta shapes. Sometimes they make them even smaller, like these little pieces, and they put them into soups. And they're delicious too. And the good thing when you have this homemade pasta, once you go through all of the work of making the pasta itself, it actually cooks up really quickly. It only takes two to three minutes to cook the pasta, which reminds me, I'm gonna add some pasta water. Thank you all for your questions. I appreciate it so much. And if there's anything you're thinking of or we're making the pasta, if you had issues with making fresh pasta at home, you want to talk about it, uh, we can do that as well. And what I'm just going to do here is I'm going to clean up a little bit, and then I'm going to start making my uh, improvisational sauce based on the ingredients that the nutrition student at MUIH made because of their wonderful culinary health properties. So remember, at MUIH, in addition to the post-baccalaureate certificate in culinary health and healing, which just takes eight months of time, and you know anybody who has a bachelor's degree could do, they also have a doctorate of clinical nutrition, they have a master of science in nutrition and integrative health, they have a post-master certificate in nutrition and integrative health. So there are a lot of different ways to take advantage of um, a career in the nutrition industry, which of course is fastly growing. So we'll start to make our sauce now. I'm going to bring over here, I have a little burner so that you all can watch me. And I'll just clean off my work area. And I'm going to turn this burner on probably medium high because I want to get it going rather quickly. There 
There we go. So here you can see the burner and you can see the cutting board. And I'm going to use all those same ingredients. So apple cider vinegar, avocado, garlic, lemon, salt, extra virgin olive oil. I've got my peppers, my tomatoes, my spinach, and it's going to be really delicious. And I don't have to worry too much about the pasta because it only takes two to three minutes to boil it. So that's cool too. So my pan is hot. So I'm going to add a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. And then I'm going to zest this lemon. This will be part of our garnish. You always want to add the olive oil in and get it cooking because it will help coax out the flavor and the nutrients of the other ingredients. You know, there are a lot of uh, things online that say you can't heat olive oil, you can't cook with it, it won't have the same properties, and it's, it's actually not true. You can go on to the North American Olive Oil Association uh, website and look at all of the kind of myths surrounding extra virgin olive oil, and there are many. So it's actually a good thing to heat up this oil, and it's going to help to coax out more of the nutrients from our onions and the other ingredients. So I'm adding those in. These are our red sliced onions, the same ones that we get in the pasta salad. And I'll just give those a stir. While we're doing that, I'm going to add in our garlic. You know, in Italy, they usually eat onions, um, especially like a lot of the um, older folks will eat them at night because they believe it helps them sleep better. So there's whenever I see onions and I smell them, I know that they're good for us. But I also have this, this um, idea in my head that if I eat them at night, they're going to help me to sleep better. But they are definitely going to help to clear away the waste material in our cells, which is really important. going to scoop out the avocado. Luckily, this is a nice and perfectly ripe one. You know, sometimes you're not so lucky. You, you want the really ripe avocado, but it's not ripe yet. You can try putting it in a brown paper bag and leaving it out at room temperature, and that will help. I also, when my avocados first start to get ripe, if I know that I'm not going to be able to eat them right away or it's in a work setting, you can put them in the refrigerator, and that will help so that they don't all, you know, get too ripe at the same time. Otherwise, it's all about the, you can make our vinaigrette if you've got too many on hand, or you can make the um, guacamole or something like that as well. So now I can really start to smell the aroma from my onions. And that's what we want, right? Because when we start to smell the aroma and they're really cooking, we get this wonderful caramelization, and that's going to add natural sugar into our recipe. So I'm gonna add my peppers now, the red and the yellow, which are full of antioxidants and nutrients for us. And while those are cooked together, I'll start to chop up some of the tomatoes because the tomatoes are going to give us more flavor, more of that wonderful lycopene, cancer-preventing compounds. And it's traditional, right? <clears throat> a lot of people can't think about pasta without tomatoes. But believe it or not, um, before the 16th century, they didn't have pasta with tomatoes in Italy. And so they were definitely using with other vegetables, with pulses, and not the tomatoes. I'm going to add them right in. It smells so great in here right now. And so I've got some fresh basil over here. Um, same like what's going in our pasta salad, but we'll put some of that into our 
very quick sauce. I'm just going to roll these up together. And do a little thick out. And now I'll toss in my spinach. This is a great thing to make for fall because all of the vitamin C and the spinach and in these other vegetables and the lemon juice is really going to help to keep us healthful. Now just for fun, and this is not traditional in the Italian kitchen, but it is in the culinary medicine kitchen, we're going to add a little bit of the red wine vinegar or apple cider vinegar. In this, in this case, it's actually apple cider vinegar. But red wine would look great too. Look at those beautiful colors. They're just so gorgeous. You know it's gonna taste good and you know that it's gonna be good for you. And I'll give it some of the lemon juice. And now you can always tell, you know, I always, tell my students to listen to the sounds in the kitchen because everybody's always worried about the way things look. But when you're in a very busy industrial kitchen, you can't always look at everything at the same time. So you have to get in tune with how things sound when they cook. And whenever you've got enough liquid in and things are simmering, this is the sound that it should have. The loud sound that we had before when we were sauteing, that was from the high temperatures. So now my water's boiling. I'm gonna boil up my fresh hot pot. I added the salt, and now these are all of them. So they're going into the water, and believe it or not, it only takes about three minutes for the fresh bakfali to cook. So we want to make sure that this portion of our sauce is ready. It's not really a sauce, it's more of what we would call a condimento in Italian or, or a condiment. This alone would be a wonderful side dish, you know, to grilled chicken, uh, fish, or any other type of dish that you were having. If I were gonna make it a vegetarian skillet, I would add some lentils or some um, beans right into this, maybe even a little bit of cheese, and it would be a delicious vegetarian dish all on its own. So the pasta is cooking up nicely. I want to toss the avocado in, but I don't really want them to cook. So I'm kind of waiting for the last minute to add them in. Otherwise, you could use them as a garnish on a plate. In goes my lemon zest. For anybody who's avoiding dairy, Lemon zest is a really good thing to add into the recipe because it gives you a lot of brightness, a lot of flavor. You don't miss the cheese, but yet um, you have this wonderful flavor and also nutrients. So I'll add my avocado in now. And you could mash this to make it creamy or you could kind of leave it whole. I think I'm going to go more for the whole option. And you can always tell when your pasta are done because they start to come up and float up to the top. And so it looks like my pasta is just about done. So I'm going to take this off the plate and then carefully move this over. So 
So this is what our fresh harfale look like when they're done being boiled. I'm just going to strain them. kept a little bit of water in because I wanted to be able to create more of a sauce as I mix these in. And having a little bit of the hot pasta water will definitely allow you to do that. So you can see this beautiful color. Um, it's not as dark as whole wheat that we know looks in this recipe, but it's definitely um, got a little bit more integrity to it. It's almost like a, like a light beige color, a light golden color than the, um, regular flour or the whole wheat flour does. It has its own unique, distinctive kind of a look. So I'm just going to plate this up. I always like to get their little colorful bits on top because it gives people a, a kind of a signal of what's in the recipe. I want to make sure that everybody gets a little bit of the good stuff. And I'm going to give it a little bit more olive oil. And we'll top it off with some basil. There you go. So this is what our homemade barfale and vegetables look like. Thank you so much, Eleonora, for um, watching and for your comment. And you're doing such a great job over there. And um, all of you, I'm a big fan of, of all of your work. So thank you very much. Anybody has any other questions, um, you know, please feel free to ask. But I hope that today not only, you know, gave you some ideas for pasta of how you could fit more pasta into your, your daily life, do it from a nutritious and delicious standpoint. Um, I hope also that you'll take a look at the MUIH website and all of the free resources that they have. And there are many more than what I discussed today. I talked about the different types of gra graduate level programs that are within the nutrition department. Um, but there's so much more to offer at, at the school. So I hope that you'll spend some time browsing their website as well. Thank you all so much for watching. Buon appetito and happy World Pasta Day.